Now, when Matty Gunn was my producer, I'm not so sure he got opening name credits either, as a matter of fact. We'll have to ask and check on that, actually. Come on. Let's be positive. Just stop right there. No negativity. Let's be positive. LVP. Let's be positive. Every Monday he comes in from the town of Twizel, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be positive. Matt, when we were working together, did I ever share the limelight on a naming basis like that? Or was I such an a-hole I said it's all about me? Martin, one thing I will say about our time together is my incredibly positive attitude came from those days. <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> Lachlan just said to me, he said, I asked Matt how he was, and he said, all right. And he said, well, no positivity today. He said, no, all right. Now I'm as positive as being all no. right. Yeah. No, I'm pretty positive. There's plenty to be positive about. Martin, when you travel around the world, there are always things that make you question why people are the way they are. You remember the Rugby World Cup in Japan? Yes. You couldn't go and have a hot pool or a bath and show your tattoos. Yes, that's right. All right? Yeah. We just copped that, didn't we? Yeah. I was like, well, hang on a sec. If we're going to be respectful of your culture and you've invited the world into your backyard, can't you be respectful of other people's cultures? It flummoxed to me at the time and this whole thing in Qatar well I actually can't be respectful of much of that culture but it is what it is but if you don't serve beer at sporting events this is a forecast of how sport will die people go there to escape mm -hmm. not to remain sober that's right? it yeah, Isn't totally. that the case? that's totally true mate and look and but yeah. but when you yeah. actually look at the the footage that's coming out of, of uh, Qatar where they've got locals lined up as fans of various sports teams I mean the crazy thing is is that you know you might have a your team might be South Korean well those guys were the same guys that were just supporting England by the look of it over 10 minutes ago so the whole thing's a farce. How long do we keep talking about it being a farce, though, Matt, before we just start clicking into the fact that, hey, it's a football tournament and ultimately we're goons and we don't care, we're into the football? You know what? That's the reality of human nature, Martin. You can be outraged for five minutes yeah. and then you just get on with yeah, it get on with and that, enjoy yeah. what the whole thing's about, right? Yeah. I mean, the walkout is not a good look, right? The walkout, having an empty stadium before the end of the game, I mean, how, how, no, that's, is that's it even fair. in the right place? Well, that's it. You know, and that's the home, that's a home fan. So if you didn't know people who've just joined us on the platform, Qatar opened the World Cup at home to Ecuador. The stadium was gone by half time. And, and I don't know whether the locals are all just thinking, hey, we can't buy a beer here. We might as well go somewhere where we can. But, yeah, look, none of this is a good look. And the fact that FIFA, you know, have even put the tournament there wasn't a good look. But, you know, you're in that position, Matt, where you've got to look around the world and go, where can they host this World Cup? They hosted it in Argentina in 1978 when a military junta were disappearing people. You know, they, this is the point. They One of the football stadiums in Buenos Aires was being used as a killing chamber, yet they hosted the World Cup there at the time and everyone looked the other way, right? It goes on. Yeah, I mean, you can't. You can, you can only sort of. You can only point the finger at so many places before you realise that everywhere have got their issues. Yeah. And the world just doesn't agree. There are too many religions. There are too many political stances. There are too many ideologies for everyone to get along. So you got to pick somewhere. And you know what? From FIFA's point of view, Qatar. Ching ching. Yeah. That's ching it. ching. Yeah. Hello. Ching ching. Yeah. What are they in the business hey? of? They're in the business of making money. If you think they're in the business of enlightening the world and wanting football to spread globally, whatever. I mean, that's what the PR says. They're in the, in the business of lining their pockets, mate, creating a huge wealth fund that then they can use for whatever reasons that they deem fit. And they don't have any checks and balances because they're a charity. I know also that if anyone's going to be positive about the All Blacks securing a dramatic draw from that test match, it's you. Well, I tell you what, I, I think the, the real beauty of that draw is is that all black fans can now enjoy a team that keeps them on the edge of their seats. They can now look at themselves in the mirror and say, we are Warriors fans <laughs> and we know what it's like from week to week, yep. up, down, left, right, ahead by two tries and then a box kick 
a box kick, know, which has no place in rugby anymore, giving the ball back to the opposition and Why? letting them score. Why? I mean, right. hang on to the ball. I know. TJ Piranara. Dude, I mean, you're Play the guy. 10, you came 12, onto 20. the field to shut the game down, not to give the ball back to them, bozo. I just can't. You know, the oh. reason that we have you there, TJ, is because all your experience is meant to close it, mate. And if that was a World Cup final, your whole career would be de- defined by the fact you cocked it up in the last minute. So be thankful at yeah, the moment. Unless. Unless they went to extra time and he got the drop goal. Yes, TJ! In, in which case his own error allows him to become the hero. That's it. I mean, this is the whole stupid the thing about way. sport. That's positive. You know, I watched that That's game positive. and, and for, you know, for the first 20 minutes, you know, we were scoring tries. Like we just, I mean, I, you know, it was, it was almost got to the stage when we were 21-0 before Rico's got disallowed. I was thinking, oh, okay, ease up a little here, lads. I don't want to put 80 points on England. I mean, we still got room for improvement, right? By the end of it, <laughs> by the end of it, as soon as they scored that second try with minutes to go, I was thinking, bloody hell, mate, look at the scoreboard. They're seven away. I know what's, you could see it unfold in front of you. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could feel it coming, couldn't you? You could feel it coming. Um, and a well-placed box kick. Right into the hands of the right players. <laughs> okay. Prove that you knew you were on the right track. Yeah, but let's be positive about oh, England, though. Matt Gunners with us out of trial. Let's be positive about England. Okay, so they're down and out. Eddie Jones is in the absolute popper. They're down by 19. They've got no chance at all. They come back and draw the game. They get one one more crack with the ball against 14 players. That means we can't commit to the breakdown because we're going to be stretched wide. So that means that they have got full license to do whatever they want on the ground. They're going to creep up and hopefully kick a penalty or at least get another line out or something. But instead, the guy just turns around, just boots it straight out. Game over. Yeah. I mean, why, why, why cop the draw like that? Like, give it a crack. Yeah. I mean, how disappointing. How mad is that? What's happening? Are the players getting dumber? I mean, you talk about over the years really clever players that they just know at the right time the right play to make. And it's not kicking it into touch. No. No. Rumble it forward. Yeah, well, that's at it. At some point, you, you, the, the game says, statistically the game says, if you hang on to it long enough the way it's governed now, There's a penalty. you're going to get a penalty. You're going to get a penalty, man. And some of these guys can kick it from 50. That's it. I mean, I'm looking at that guy. I mean, you know, your hand. I'm sitting there watching this game, and I was sitting there watching it with a mate, um, Matt um, McLaughlin. He owns the Panhead down in Wellington. I gave him a plug for it. And he's saying, I was saying, if you, you know, if you, if you're an American sports fan here, when World Rugby says they're going to go into the United States, they're going to dominate the United States sports scene by 2031. <laughs> I mean, sitting there going, mate, I've watched this before. I don't understand the rules. And every 30 seconds is another penalty. I mean, that was what was so glorious about the women's game is that it actually is a game of rugby like you remember rugby to be. That's that, I mean, I was sitting there thinking, I said to Matt, I said, I'd rather be watching the final Eden Park, and this is sacrilege for me to say so because I really want us to beat England, but by God, men's rugby needs a rocket, doesn't it? You've been hit by the hype. Oh, maybe You've been I have, hit mate. by the hype yeah, of the have. Yeah, maybe I have. women's rugby World Cup, which is fantastic. That's what the game wants. And you see through the week... A group of people decided they could scrape together enough money to give them $25,000 each. And good on them. Yeah. Yeah, but Matt, answer me this. Think- why is it up to a whole lot of politicians to yell at the rugby union about this? Why don't, why don't they yell at every other business in the place about it? Why don't they actually yell at Sports Snow Sports New Zealand who didn't give Zoe any money or Nico any money for winning gold medals? But the hell out. It's not your business unless you're a member of a rugby union. Yeah. No, oh, no, they should stay away. There's no two ways about it. And the, and the, and the other thing about it, Martin, is... Maybe the rugby union were looking at it from a financial point of view, which was saying, actually, we don't make enough money out of these games to no, pay them those bonuses. We don't have the money. Not saying they don't have, <laughs> I'm not saying they don't, they don't deserve it. The other thing is the outrage this week after the women's rugby league team made the final of the rugby league World Cup and were flogged. Don't worry about that. But the outrage that they aren't sponsored, promoted, and paid better, has been deafening. Deafening. So we've picked one sport over the last month or so because it was here. Yes. But like we've discussed over that time frame, hang on, what about the rest of them? Can we have parity everywhere? Not if there's no well, I would like, money. I'd like, to see, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see the parliamentarians now stand up and say, since Lydia Coe just won the $3 million bonus and finished the year on top, New Zealand Golf should be writing a cheque for her, shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they be? I mean, New Zealand yeah, New Golf, Zealand, come on. New Zealand Golf don't even own a chequebook anymore, do you they, Mark? You've got to give me a sexist, that's what your problem is. 
They can't give out any money to anybody. Let's be positive yeah. about the Australian men's and women's rugby league teams, mate, because you've dominated the world again. That kangaroo side, Matt, nine out of the last ten, three in a row, never even looked like a great team until that final when they just basically said, not only we are a great team, but none of you come even close. No. No, and there were some magic moments in that final too. Look, I think this is a terrific thing for Samoa. Absolutely terrific. But since the 70s, the Australian rugby league team has held that mantle. You know, it's 2022. For the last half a century, that team has put their hand up at the right time. And as much as we've talked about the 90% winning record of the All Bucks or whatever it is these days... That Australian rugby league team is one of the great teams with different players every year, with coaches coming through. They've been able to maintain. And, you know, the semi final showed that they could be run close. The Kiwis did that, maybe even should have won it. But Samoa didn't even come close, no, even with all the great NRL players they had. And, you know, what's that all about? Well, I think that's about 50 years of thinking back at the great rugby league players and the men that inspired that team to play the game and saying, like we used to say about the All Blacks, we need to maintain this. Mm-hmm. And the women were just absolutely dominant. That, yeah. that was that was, that was a bit crazy. Of a pass, that yeah, that was great. Never saw that coming. Sadly, so you yeah, never saw that no. result coming, mate. I, look, I mean, you know, it was ten eight in the in the pool match, but also the way that uh, our girls played against England and that. Did we look cohesive? We looked strong, and I just think, do you know what it was? I just think that the occasion got to them. I really do. I think for a lot of Maybe those, it did. for a lot of those women, I know that a lot of them are playing, uh, you know, NRL ladies and that. But I just think being on a world stage, a world final, a big packed house, Old Trafford. I've been there. You know, it's a, it's a can, can be a daunting stadium. That all of a sudden, I think for the first time in their lives, they were in that situation. And I don't know if it, if life prepares you for it if you haven't been and done it before. That's the only thing I can put it down to because they're good players and they were playing well. No, they are. They're way better than way better than what we saw in the final. But you're right. If, you, if a team is overawed a little bit by the situation and the opposition isn't, and even if the opposition, even if you're 5 or 6% below where you should be and the opposition aren't affected and even lift a little bit, well, there's no way you can, there's no way you can sort of recover from that. And if that's nerves, that's nerves. They wouldn't be the only team or individual to get to a position like that and just fall over, sometimes making it to a final. We've seen it in tennis, and you see it in the final rounds of majors and all sorts of things in golf. You know, if it gets to you, it gets to you. Martin, you and I, we're never overawed by situations. We just march on because, <laughs> well, excellence is just part of the That's nature. It, mate. You just, can we finish You look on, at the positives and you just keep going Can forward. we finish on the fact that the beautiful Mrs. You has all of a sudden mm. somehow managed to wang a Sky Go from somewhere, right? This is great, ladies and gentlemen. So what she did, what she told Matt, she said, uh, I've just watched the All Blacks beat Scotland, Matt. That, that was last week. Friday. Yeah, that was last week. Friday she watched it, Matt. She watched Friday. it. Friday. We and just beat Scotland, Matt. I thought to myself, as the man who is encouraging women to watch more sports, yes. I haven't even asked for the password. I haven't tried to dominate this new subscription. I don't know where it came from. I didn't say anything until Sunday when we wake up, 25 all. I said, oh, did you see the All Blacks result? She went, yeah, 25 all with England. I said, it's amazing how they can play two games in three days, (laughs) darling, isn't it? That amazing win over Scotland on Friday and then again a draw with England Back on it up. Sunday. Well, that's no right. wonder it was a draw. That's it. No wonder we run and out of puff in the last the ten. She gave me the eye as if to say, you, you didn't mention anything about this on Friday. <laughs> now I'm feeling stupid. I got the evil eye. I just took my uh, I just took my normal route. I walked over to the shed and I had a little giggle and I celebrated with a beer and I thought at least she's watching more rugby. Finally, Resurrection Distillery is the name of the man's business. That's his Facebook page as well, people. Resurrection Distillery gives us all his time for free. And if you love LBP with TMG, Resurrection Distillery. They just jump your Facebook, do they, mate? Jump on the Facebook, Marty. Jump on the Facebook. We're just redoing the website. We've had a few issues with the website. We've had a few issues, but we're moving on. Don't you just want to punch everyone in the face that's doing your website, mate? I've never met anyone who's doing the website that I don't want to knee in the balls and punch in the face. I've just got a few issues. What is it about IT people? I don't know, mate. They just want to punch me in the face. They talk to me in a language. Talking to me in a language I don't understand. I'll fix it. I'll do it, mate. You never do it properly. 
Hoodwink, left and right, I'm thinking to myself, I just should have bought a Shopify one and thrown some pictures on myself. <laughs> it would have been easier. Thank you, Matt, as always, brother. Matt Gunn joining us.